I want to provide a brief introduction on using a financial calculator. What I have here is I have both the BA2 Plus Professional and the HP 10B um, Plus Financial Calculator as well. And so those of you who have watched my videos, I have used the BA2 Plus Calculator for many years and I thought I'd provide an introduction to using the HP calculator as well and so I might as well sort of compare the two in terms of some of the key stroking. So they're a little bit different much of it is the same and um, there's some advantages to the HP and I'm still learning about this um, and there's some advantages to the TI calculator as well. So let me show you the first thing to do. So right now you can see that it's set for two decimal places, both of them. If you want to change that on, on the uh, TI calculator, it's second and over the dot key it says format and you'll have a bunch of these different things you can change and one of, the, one of them is the decimal places. So you could change it to four you have to hit enter now you're seeing four decimal places you can also hit it set it for nine in which case you simply get a floating decimal place you won't even see a decimal place it will show you all the decimal places you'll have to round off for yourself over here on the HP calculator what you see one of the real differences is is that here we have the second key it's like a shift key on a keyboard and you see things above this. So if you hit second and I hit the dot key, it does the item that's above format. Here they have actual, actually two different um, function keys. So the blue one, the light blue one gives you what's above the key and this rust colored one gives you what's below the key or on the lower part of the key. So here, this one happens to be the downshift, I'll call it, and the equal sign underneath that, and it's a little hard to see, it says DISP, display, and you'll hit four, and you get four decimal places. I do not believe you can have the floating decimal places here. So if you are, for example, to go to um, the display and to go to nine, it would show you nine decimal places. So let's just go back to, um, and we'll go back to two decimal places since we're doing dollar transactions or interest rate transactions. Um, oftentimes I recommend to my students that you do more than two decimal places, such as four decimal places, because if you're doing a calculation um, of an interest rate and not using the function here, it's not going to be a whole number. It's going to be 0.01 but you're going to get 0 0.01 if it's 0 .0051 or 0 .0149 it's going to round off to 0 .01 and they're almost a percentage point apart so it's not exactly the same thing so you really should show more decimal places when you're using the time value of money function keys which I'm going to do in a second um, you're getting whole numbers so two places after the decimal is probably fine let me set this one for the same thing I have before um, two decimal places and so we have sort of comparable comparable look alright for the time value of money function keys you can see that there's a row here on both of the calculators and they're in the same order. N is the number of periods. Um, usually we consider that years. I slash Y is the interest rate per year. PV is present value. PMT stands for the payment or the annuity, that stream of equal payments made at equal intervals. And FV is future value. And you have the same functions over here on the HP calculator. Now to clear the workspace, the time value of money workspace, for the TI you hit second 
and above the FV key it says CLR TVM. To clear the time value of money function keys here on the HP calculator, it's going to be this upshift, shift up, the blue one, and above that is on the C, the clear is C mem, clear memory, and it's going to be number one. Now, I'll be honest, when I looked at the uh, quick start menu, they said to clear the memory, it was uh, the blue shift key, the this key C, and one, and they said for the cash flow worksheet, it was zero, and for the break even worksheet, it was four, and for the bond worksheet, it was seven. And th there was no explanation. I was going, thinking, how can you remember that? Well, you can remember that, and again, I don't know how clear it is on the video. They tell you right next to here. So it's written in blue. You see this blue line here? Here, this one says um, cash flow. This one says TVM. This one says, um, this is for break even. And this one says bond here. So you know zero is for cash flow, one is for time value of money, four is for break even, and seven is for the bond worksheet. All right, let's try and solve a future value question. Suppose you get $100, or you put $100 in the bank today, how much will it be worth in five years if the interest rate is 10%? So on the TI calculator, the keystroking is a little bit different. You put in 5 for N, and you see it says N equals 5, all right, which I like. It tells you what you typed in. The interest rate goes in as a whole number. It'll be the same in the HP calculator. And again, it tells you what you just put in. The PV, I said, was 100. And then to calculate the future value, you have to hit CPT for compute FV. So we get $161.05. And those of you who are familiar with the financial calculator, you're going to get the opposite sign um, for future value than you did for present value. The assumption is, is you have cash inflows and cash outflows. It doesn't really matter here. We know that you're not being charged $161.05. Um, it's the idea that if uh, somebody gave you $100 today, you'd be paying back, or it would be a negative cash flow of $161.05 next year. Over here on the HP calculator, we're going to do 5 is N. And the problem is, is that you don't know what you just put in. It's, it comes out, but you don't get the N equals. Interest rate is 10. Okay, put it in as a whole number. Right, and they call it um, I slash YR. Here they call I slash Y. PV is 100. And there's no compute key. You just hit the FV key, and you get the same answer. So it works rather nicely, but the problem is, is that sometimes you don't know or you won't, won't be sure what it is you typed in. Okay, Where here, it tells you what you have. All right, let me clear the workspace here. So this one's going to be, let me clear it first, the blue shift key, C clear memory and number one clear time value of money and this sort of flashes something to tell you what it has. It also flashes the number of periods per year for the interest rate. For this one I'll just hit second clear TVM. If you want to change the number of periods per year so here you would hit second periods per year and you could change it to for example 12 what does that do that means you're doing it monthly so whatever interest rate you give it it's going to divide it by 12 everything else you have to put in correctly the number of months but it will adjust the interest rate okay this is a common mistake sometimes you'll get do calculations you're not getting the same answer as everybody else in the class or the same as the answer in the textbook this may be the problem. 
I usually like to set it at one. Whoops. So second um, number one, enter, and just divide the interest rate by 12 so I know what I'm doing. Over here, if you want to change it, it's going to be, I believe you're going to type in the number first, okay, this um, downshift key and periods per year. All right, uh, let me do that again. Do I have to do that twice? No, I think that's okay. So this will divide by 12. If I cleared this memory, you'll see it flash quickly, 12 periods per year. Um, let's see if we can do that. See, 12 periods per year flashes fairly quickly to let you know. Again, I'm going to change that back to 1, um, shift, and periods per year. All right, let's make sure that I actually changed it. That's this is something I don't like about this calculator. You're not really sure um, what you just did. All right, clear memory and one, and did it is it going to flash a one? Okay. All right, so that's how you do this time value of money function. The other popular thing you'll do in with a financial calculator is you'll use a cash flow worksheet. And they both have cash flow worksheets, but they work a little differently. In the TI, you hit the CF, and it calls up the worksheet. So, for example, the cash flow at time period zero. So you might, the project might cost $500, so you want to change the sign to negative. And then you have to enter so that you see that it's registered. And then you go down arrow key, and let's say we have the first cash flow is 100. Enter, down arrow key. It'll it'll give you a chance to put in the number of times the frequency. So if this appears three times, you don't have to type it three times. So let me say it appears twice. Okay, enter, and then the next cash flow. So this will actually be cash flow number three because the first two are um, 100 and 100. Let's say this one's 200. Enter. Okay, so I've put those in, and I'll just let that go once. So we have cash flow of 100, 100, 200, and let me put in one more cash flow, uh, 300 here. So enter, and we have these cash flows in here. And we can calculate things like internal rate of return. Okay, we can hit that internal rate of return key and hit compute, and it'll tell you that it's 12.16 percent. Now let's try this on the HP calculator. All right, they have a cash flow worksheet here too, CFJ. All right, so the first cash flow I said was minus 500. So 500, the plus minus key is up here rather than all the way down here. And then you hit cash flow. Oops, I didn't clear my cash flow worksheet, so let me do that. That's putting that in at cash flow number six. So how do I clear that? Remember we hit the blue shift key, memory, cash flow. Okay, so I've cleared the cash flow worksheet. So let me try that again. 500, and I want to make it negative, and then I'm going to hit cash flow. And so there it quickly flashes it, but if you're not paying attention, you may not see that. Okay, the second cash flow is a hundred. And then you just hit the cash flow worksheet and it pops up rather quickly. And I said that appeared twice. So I'm gonna hit two and underneath the CFJ key, it says NJ. So that's the number of times it appears. So hit this downshift key and hit this, and that'll put it in as two. And then I said the next cash flow, I think, was 200. So that's the second cash flow. And the third cash flow was 300. 
Hopefully I've put these in correctly. And let me calculate the internal rate of return. And where is that? IRR. Let's see, if you look at these functions here, underneath the CST key is IRR per year. So again, it has more functions, but they're a little bit smaller, a little bit harder to see. Um, so the downshift key, and I hit this, and we get the same thing, 12.16%. Now, if you've made a mistake in your worksheet here, right, you can call up the worksheet and scroll down and see what you've typed in. You can do that here, but here's how you do that you have to hit recall RCL cash flow and then that tells you that the first ca the zero period cash flow is minus 500 plus means go forward minus means goes backwards so that appears once the hundred dollar cash flow in year one appears twice you can see cash flow n the second cash flow is 200 appears once and the third cash flow is 300. Now over here if you want to edit this you can simply just type in a new number so if I wanted to put 400 in here I would just simply type 400 and hit enter. Here you have to be in this viewing mode or editing mode and let me see if I can do this correctly. You'll type 400 input and that should change it so hopefully we've changed everything and that's how you change it so you have to put it in as an input all right so let's go back and recalculate um, IRR because I changed the number here from 300 to 400 okay 16.75 and let me see if I get it correct here this is 16.75 Okay, finally, let's compute net present value. So it's going to calculate the um, present value of the cash flows and then subtract out that cost. All right, so if you hit the NPV key here, it asks you for an interest rate. Let's use an interest rate of 12%. Make sure you hit enter and see the equal sign. Scroll down, okay, with this arrow key, hit compute. 65.57. Over here, you'll use this interest rate key that's already here, and I think I said 12%. We put that in, and the NPV function is underneath, it's the, again, red shift key under the PRC. And you get the same thing. So you can see that there are some differences. I, I like the TI because it shows you what you've typed in. It shows you what this number is. Here it's a little confusing. You just have a number if you don't remember what it is. Um, or if you were looking at your cash flows, you have to kind of call them up special to check them and edit them. But that may just be a bias because I've been using the TI calculator for many years and I'm actually new to the HP calculator. But, you know, those are some of the little subtle differences. Um, essentially that you have more functions here, uh, a shift up and a shift down. Uh, you know, they both do most of the same things. So, you know, whichever one you choose, they both work well. They're both uh, allowed for the CFA exam. So, um, I'll make some more videos for the HP calculator. I have a number of them already for using the TI calculator.